Chinese billionaires' number slumps after tumultuous year. Insiders reveal why Honduras turned its back on Taiwan. Deepening rift keeps the Biden Xi conversation at bay. Former Shenzhen official's granddaughter boasts of wealth, slams low class, causing outrage. Astellas Pharma confirms Beijing has detained their employee. Iron fist crackdowns have made China the country with the greatest loss of billionaires worldwide this year. On the number of tycoons whose net worth dropped below $1 billion, the Huron Global Rich List 2023, released on March 23rd, named 445 individuals worldwide. Among them were 229 Chinese nationals. While the country still posted the greatest number of billionaires globally, their overall fortune has decreased by 15 percent. Furthermore, none made it to the top 10 of the Global Rich List, which LVMH's Bernard Arnault topped with $202 billion and Elon Musk with $157 billion. Among them, Alibaba's Jack Ma slipped from 34th to 52nd in this year's ranking. Last year, China's gross domestic product reached only 3 percent, far below its set target of 5.5 percent. The downturn happened as Beijing tightened its grip on trillion-dollar industries from technology to education to property. COVID-19 measurements also significantly dampened its economy as businesses faced constant disruptions from spontaneous lockdowns. Then came geopolitical tensions as governments began to shun China over human rights, cybersecurity, intellectual property, and market access issues. As the Financial Times reported, the value of yuan dropped 6 percent compared to the dollar, and the Shenzhen stock market in South China lost 17 percent by the end of the year. Rupert Hugwerf, founder and chairman of the Huron Report, said interest hike rates, the appreciation of the U.S. dollar, the popping of a COVID-driven tech bubble, and the continued impact of the Russia-Ukraine war have all combined to hurt stock markets. Honduras, a country that has diplomatic relations with Taiwan, recently changed its stance and announced it's about to establish diplomatic relations with the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. Some insiders leaked some internal information to Taiwan CNA on March 22nd. On March 22nd, CNN cited insiders saying the Honduran government's attitude towards Taiwan has fluctuated for over a year. For example, President Xiaomara Castro, who has just taken office, invited Taiwan Vice President Lai Xingdu to attend her inauguration. However, just a few days after taking office, in discussions with the CCP, they discussed building a $6 billion large-scale infrastructure project. The CCP continuously offers enticements to the Honduran government. According to sources familiar with the matter, the Honduran government has regularly contacted the CCP and has met with China several times through third parties such as presidents, family members, and confidants. On March 13th, Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs received a letter from the Honduran foreign minister requesting nearly $2.5 billion in aid. Without waiting for Taiwan's reply, the very next day, President Castro announced her readiness to establish diplomatic relations with the CCP. People knowledgeable about the matter said, in the past, Central and South American countries hid their machinations against Taiwan, waiting until the last minute to cut off diplomatic relations. However, how Honduras announced cutting off ties was unusual and seemed to have been calculated. There is a shadow of the CCP manipulation behind it. It seems they want to prolong the negative effect of interfering in Taiwan's political situation. Sources have said that President Joe Biden might need to wait a while longer for China to accept his call for dialogue. As Bloomberg reports, the high-profile call may now be delayed until after Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen's stopover in the U.S. in early April, a trip that undoubtedly would trigger animosity from China, especially after there's a chance she might meet with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy during their stay. The phone call between both world leaders was initially hoped to happen right after China's National People's Congress, which wrapped up on March 13th. It would have been the first call after meeting at the G20 in Bali last November. But sources said China has displayed low enthusiasm for such an engagement. An unidentified source told Reuters that Daniel Crittenbrink, the State Department's chief diplomat for East Asia, personally sought after China's top diplomat Wang Yi at the conference to inquire about the request. Relationships between governments have especially soured in recent months after various events, from the spy balloon to the recent meeting between Xi and Russian leader Vladimir Putin. A source told Reuters that tensions were also magnified by Biden's State of the Union address three days later, in which he looked to challenge Xi's position on the global stage, angering officials in Beijing. However, Adrian Watson, a spokeswoman for the National Security Council, rejected that growing tensions were the reason that impeded the call. She told Bloomberg, the two leaders will speak at some point in the coming weeks, but we have nothing specific to announce. 
According to the publication, U.S. officials said reestablishing communications is a high priority. Reportedly, Secretary of State Antony Blinken has been trying to rearrange his called-off trip. Others, such as Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, may also travel to China. On March 24th, the granddaughter of the former Transport Bureau Director of Shenzhen, Guangdong Province, flaunted her wealth on the internet, claiming her family had hundreds of millions of yuan, and said, My family has so much money because it is provided by the chives, the oppressed people. These arrogant statements have angered netizens, pushing this news to the hot search list. A netizen posted on Weibo a screenshot of the girl's posts and comments with the following caption. One, after the Shenzhen Transport Bureau decided to investigate the incident, the girl was sobbing. At the same time, her grandfather said, we must investigate clearly because of fear of affecting the bureau's reputation and the girl's education. Two, the granddaughter of the former Shenzhen Transport Bureau director insulted other netizens as lowly rats, lowly people, pets, and the bottom. She even said, when my granddad was the bureau director, your granddad still fixed people's toenails on the street. Three, the girl posted a seafood picture and said she only eats king crab while scolding netizens by saying they only deserve to drink rice water for the year-end meal. Number four, she also used discriminatory words against other netizens and emphasized that my property has nine digits. Five, she then posted a photo of her grandfather taken with leaders from many years ago, including the then transport minister. Six, she said, my family has so much money because it is provided by the chives, the oppressed people, and said she had moved to Australia to settle down. At the same time, she also arrogantly replied to the Guangdong Transport Department that she was not afraid of a police investigation. Currently, the count Arctic Catfish of this girl has been banned on Weibo. According to public information, her granddad is Zhang XC, the former director of the Shenzhen Transport Bureau's freight branch, who retired on November 30, 2007. According to the enterprise inspection app QCC, Zhang XC's domestic-affiliated company is Jinyu Yuandong, established in September 2003 with a registered capital of $12 million. The company's legal representative and chairman all have the same surname, Zhang. The company's business scope includes producing and consuming high-strength transparent silica, high-strength silicone rubber silica, matting agent, sodium metasilicate, etc. Currently, the related topics have become Weibo's hot searches. Many Weibo netizens have commented expressing anger at the Chinese officials' corruption. A person said, from Zhou Gangji, who was famous for showing off his wealth last year, to the rich bureau director's granddaughter. Now it's no longer the second-generation officials matter, but the third-generation official. It can be seen that the rich class is being consolidated. Wealthy families, grandchildren, are still enjoying wealth and prosperity, while lower classes' grandchildren still suffer. Another said, the girl's granddad was the former transport bureau director. Before that, the Zhou Gangji family in Jiangxi, in Jiangxi also had a highway company and traffic design institute. Is this a coincidence? Can you guys in the government reveal a little bit? So what's the conclusions we can draw? Was Zhou Gangxi fired from public office? Not at all. Since when did anti-corruption efforts become so weak? A netizen wrote, Some netizens joke, the Arctic catfish and Zhou Gangxi should be together. They would make a great couple. Japanese pharmaceutical firm Astellas Pharma told Reuters on March 26 that Beijing authorities had taken one of its employees into custody. The company did not detail precisely who the person is, but confirmed that the man is a Japanese national. Local media NHK reported on March 25th that he was in his 50s and was an executive at the company. As NHK reported, the drug maker said, We are worried about everyone involved. We are seeking information through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and will respond appropriately. Estella's Pharma said it did not know the reason behind the arrest, adding that it relies on Japan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs for further information. However, NHK said the man was suspected of violating the country's laws and that national security agents had taken him away. The Japanese media noted China needed to explain what may have led to the arrest. According to Reuters, the Japanese government had requested Chinese authorities to free the man. The arrest had prompted worries that the man could be accused of spying. China has a record of using such allegations to detain foreigners during diplomatic fallout with other governments, a practice commonly called hostage diplomacy. The most typical example was the Two Michaels case, where China apprehended two Canadian nationals in apparent retaliation after Canada arrested Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou. Foreign nationals have also been arrested on suspicion of spying for, for being involved in journalism, activism, or academic research that exposes human rights violations or sensitive issues in China. 
For example, an Australian journalist working for CGTN, Chung Lei, and a Chinese news assistant for Bloomberg News, Ha Zhu Fan, were arrested on national security charges in 2020 and 2021. While Chung remains under custody, Fan was released in 2022.